time for a quick video talking about modifiers. We're working in Studio 110, which if you haven't checked out, you absolutely should. Uh, the, the point of this is to explain what object modifiers are, because I saw a lot of folks not understanding them. So I've just made up a little test shape here, just a little thing with some overhangs that we can play with. And the first thing I'm going to do is look at add part. Let's say I want to add a cylinder to it. That's going to show up in the color of my material. So I've got my white cylinder here, and if I want, I could make that a different color. It's going to show me the color that it'll print in when you're in this normal view. If I go to slice that, there we have our object. Cool. What are the other modifiers, though? If we go down, I'm going to look at add a negative part. Let's say I want to stick a cone in here, and I'm just going to put that right in the middle here. Well, it's kind of this ghostly gray color, and when I go to slice, it's going to prevent that part from printing. So now I have this little cone cut out in this wall. Neat. Okay, so that's our first one. The gray ghostly cutout for a negative object. Or I guess our second one. Then you have modifiers. Modifiers show up in yellow. And I'm going to actually do something a little bit different. Instead of adding it directly from here, which you can do, I'm going to take a text shape. And let's see if my font will... Oh, come on. Let's see if my font will work. Come on. All right, we use the bamboo font. Maybe it'll work. And I'm just going to uh, bamboo. Why not? Nope, it doesn't like that font. Oh, well, worth a try. So I've stuck an object on here right now. And if I go to print this, it's just going to add that material to the front. And just like before, I could take this and I could change its color. So I could make that, say, my green filament. And now I have a green bamboo on a white block. Neat. Okay. But what I want to do is change that to be a modifier. So I can change type, make this a modifier object, and now it's going to be a ghostly yellow. Well, if I go and slice this again, so I just have my green there because I have that green filament, but hey, at least now it's flush. All it understands is make this shape green. Okay. Well, if that was white, though, if I change it back to my default filament, nothing. Because nothing has been modified. So, what can I modify with this? Well, I personally like turning on fuzzy skin here. Because now I have a really neat textured effect on the surface using one material and no changes. That's a pretty cool thing you can do. You can do other stuff like changing speed and wall counts and whatnot. I really wouldn't recommend messing with wall counts. It has a tendency to kind of mess things up. But in this case, at least, making that kind of an embossed or engraved look, it's a pretty neat effect. So that's our object modifier. You can use this to change anything that you would normally change in your process profile. So if you want to change line widths or speeds or any of the top surfaces, the infill pattern even, whatever you'd want to do. Cool stuff. So what other modifiers do we have? Well, now we have the support blocker. And anyone who remembers Kira will probably remember this one. It's a red cube, whatever shape you add. What is the purpose of a support blocker and inversely also looking at a support enforcer? What do these things do? Well, right now, nothing because I don't have supports turned on. So if I go back to my uh, global settings and turn supports on, I'm just going to get supports on this square part because it needs them. This angled parts at 45 degrees. It does not need supports, so it won't have them. Now I can change the way this behaves by using the painting tool, which is what I would honestly recommend doing. Uh, for example, I could take it fill overhangs only and tell it put my supports here. If I hold down alt, I can turn it. Or let me erase the painting. If I hold down alt, I can turn it into a blocker. Or, I'm sorry, it's right click. I always get that wrong. Right click makes it a blocker. So let me turn my overhang area up this side right here. Now that I have that selected because I've changed my angle to greater than 45 degrees, I can click that, and now these are both going to have supports. It's going to enforce having supports there by painting, right? Well, I can go back into my painting tool, and I can erase that painting, and I can move my object modifiers into place. So let's say I want to block supports for whatever reason on this inside corner. So I just drag this over here, but I want to enforce them on this guy but in a very specific shape for some odd reason. Apply however you would need this. Well, what's going to happen? Remember, we're using auto supports right now. 
Now we get that block piece because it's telling auto supports not to, uh, to print here. And we're getting an enforcement here forcing those supports in. Let me change the color so that's a little bit more obvious. So you can see where those modifiers enforce and block automatic supports. Now what happens if I change this to manual supports? We don't get a block because there's nothing telling it to put it here. So there's, there's no, no enforcement by painting or by object saying put supports here. But meanwhile, we do have the uh, support enforcer saying right here that you need to have supports. Now, a fun part, if I come in here and use my painting tool and tell it support that area, this has no effect. It's still going to put supports there because the blocker only modifies automatic supports. So if you put in manually painted supports and you're trying to block them with an object modifier, it will not work. But yeah, that's the, the four or five different colors. What do we got? Let's go back and look. We've got the color of whatever you add to a solid object. We've got that ghostly gray for a negative object. We've got the yellow for a um, object modifier. Red for support blocker and blue for support enforcer. I hope this is helpful.